background lights one, background lights two, and then, hey. Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Demis Rizzoli and I hope you're all doing well. So before we get to that Cinemagraph tutorial that you've all been waiting for, I thought I'd give two really quick life updates about what's going on in my life right now. So one of them is really exciting and the other one's not so exciting. It's quite scary, but it's gonna be necessary for my future health. Let's start with life update number one. As you guys can tell, hopefully, I've got a whole new setup now. My wife and I moved to a new apartment. Previously, we were living in a one bedder, so my studio was actually the living room, but now we've moved to a two bedroom apartment. So the second bedroom is now a dedicated studio space for me to create YouTube videos or to create whatever I want, actually. But yeah, I'm super excited um, and I can't wait to make a studio tour video in the future. I'm gonna do a few more things and add more things to the background and, you know, add more things to the room. But yeah, it's been very exciting and a good change and a new change, um, which yeah, I'm very, very excited for in the future. Life update number two is that in a few days when this video is launched, I'm actually gonna be getting jaw surgery, actually double jaw surgery. So I've had this issue for a while now where my airways are actually very narrow. And so sometimes I find it really hard to breathe, especially when I sleep at night or when I play sports. It's not that great, but I've um, just been getting by. The surgery was supposed to happen back in April, but when COVID hit, we had to postpone. So it's actually happening in early November. Kinda a bit scared and anxious about what's gonna happen afterwards. Um, the recovery time is about four to six weeks. So yeah, this video, this tutorial, I've actually already recorded beforehand. So the studio in the intro and the outro is actually our old apartment. And I've also recorded another tutorial to push out when I'm recovering, but yeah, content's just gonna come out a little bit slower all on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. But I'll be back and hopefully after the surgery, the breathing gets better and yeah, I'll have even more energy than I actually already have right now. But yeah, wish me luck for the surgery. If anyone out there has done double jaw surgery or a jaw surgery in the past and you guys have any tips, drop them in the comments below and let me know what I should look out for. If not, I'll try to document a bit of the process and you guys can follow along. I'll probably throw some maybe selfies on Instagram stories or something so you guys can keep updated to what my face is gonna look like. I think I'm gonna look a little bit different, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see on the other side if you guys can recognize me or not. But yeah, that's it with the life update. So now let's get to the tutorials and I'll show you guys how you can create a cinemagraph using Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial video. I hope everyone's doing well and pushing your creative boundaries. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to create a cinemagraph using Photoshop. So before we begin, let's just talk about what a cinemagraph is. So a cinemagraph is a combination of a photo and video where the frame will have a pretty much still image with a little bit of movement. Usually they're quite subtle movements, but there are also cinemagraphs which have bigger and bolder movements as well. The reason why I like to create cinemagraphs is because I think it makes my content a little bit more interesting and it makes the viewer look for the movements, which is much more intriguing and more interesting for them to see as well. A cinemagraph also usually loops so you don't know when it starts and ends. So people can be watching it for like five minutes and not know that it's like an endless cinemagraph. So before we jump into Photoshop and talk about the editing, let's talk about how we can go out and shoot our own cinemagraphs. So because we're gonna be editing it in Photoshop, there's not gonna be like a warp stabilizer or anything that's gonna stabilize your footage so it's still like you would in Adobe Premiere Pro. So it's best to shoot using a tripod. And once you've got your tripod set up, you wanna record some sort of movement. So whether it's like a girl's dress moving, or a waterfall or some traffic moving, whatever it may be, you wanna record some sort of movement so that you can create the cinemagraph. You can also apply the same editing technique I'm gonna show you in Photoshop in Adobe Premiere Pro as well. But I think a lot of you don't have Premiere Pro, so I'm gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop. All right, so let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you guys how to create a looping cinemagraph. Okay, so I've opened up Photoshop and let's just open the video file we're gonna be using. Did you guys know that Photoshop can open video files? When I found this out for the first time a few years ago, it blew my mind. Anyway, so here's the video we're gonna be using. I shot this on a tripod so I know it's perfectly still and will work when creating a cinemagraph. So the first thing you might notice that's different when opening a video on Photoshop is that there's this timeline window at the bottom. This shows the entire video sequence. You can zoom in or out to change the view, scrub through it like you would on a video editing program and press play or hit the space bar to play the video. Notice that it's also a layer on the right side in the layers panel, so it works like a standard Photoshop layer. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just to crop the frame to four x five ratio, as I'm gonna be sharing this as an Instagram post. 
So I click crop on the left, select 4x5 ratio from this drop down menu, make sure delete crop pixels is turned off, and then just pick the composition you like. I tried not to crop in from the sides because the video file is 1080 by 1920 and 1080 width is the minimum you want for Instagram videos. So I tried to just compose it up and down rather than cropping it left and right. So once we got the composition we want, let's make this video loop. I've made a more in-depth tutorial on how to loop videos on Adobe Premiere Pro which I've linked in the top corner, so essentially the technique is the same here. The first thing you want to do is to trim a bit of the video from the beginning and I'll explain why we do this a bit later on. So from this 20 second clip, I'm just going to trim the first 4 seconds. Just make sure when you're initially recording the video to record it a bit longer than you need to to make this step possible. So as the final video I'm going to be making here is only going to be 10 seconds long, I'm also going to trim the back of it as well. So I put the cursor at the 10 second mark and then just drag the right side of the clip back to that cursor. You should also click this cog or settings icon to turn on loop playback so you can see the videos looping when it ends. In this menu you can also change the playback resolution as well if you want to. Alright so now we've got this 10 second clip, we're going to make a duplicate of this layer. To do this you can either right click on the folder in the layers panel and then click duplicate group or you can just drag the folder onto this new layer button. So once this new layer is created, you want to slide the bottom layer all the way to the end of the timeline so that the start of it lines up with the end of the top layer. Then you're going to extend the left part of the bottom layer to show the part you removed earlier. In this case, I bought back 2 seconds of it so it lined up at the 8 second mark. And then you're also going to bring the end of the bottom layer back to the end of the top layer. So now the end of the video clip is actually where the top clip starts. This concept is a little bit complicated to wrap your head around, but you'll see how it works in just a bit. Then what we want to do is to make the top layer fade out, which will reveal the bottom layer below it. To do this, we're going to have to create some keyframes. So first click on this drop down icon for the top layer, which will reveal a few options. Next, make sure the cursor is at the 8 second mark and then click this stopwatch icon next to opacity. A yellow diamond should appear which means you have created a keyframe. Next, drag the cursor a little bit to the right and then change the opacity of the layer to 0%. This will create a smooth transition between the two keyframes from 100% opacity to 0% opacity. Finally, drag that second keyframe all the way to the end of the clip. So essentially what we've done now is made the top layer fade out within the last 2 seconds which reveals the bottom layer which actually is part of the top video that precedes the top layer, creating an endless loop. You want to get creative with this and find things that can loop endlessly like waterfalls, waves, clouds or car trail time lapses as an example. Alright now that we've got the looping video, let's add a still image on top to finish off this cinemagraph. So I've edited this image I shot of my wife at the same location but at a different angle which is fine using Lightroom Classic. And we're just going to open up in Photoshop by right clicking and then clicking edit in and then edit in Photoshop. It's good to shoot the subject at the same location to get the lighting correct or similar. So now this file is open in Photoshop, I just select a box around her and then hit Ctrl C to copy and then Ctrl V to paste it back into the original file. Make sure this layer is at the very top when it's copied in. The photo file will probably be much bigger than the video file, so first I want to just scale it down. To do this, click the layer that you just pasted in, then right click and then click free transform or hit Ctrl T on your keyboard. Then just scale it down until you're happy with the size. Next we want to extend this layer on the timeline so it lasts the full 10 seconds. As you can see now, there's a still image on top of the video file below. So the next step would be to mask out the box area around the subject and make the photo layer blend nicely with the background video. There are a couple ways to do this, but the easiest would be to click this remove background button and the Photoshop AI will try to remove the background automatically for you. This also creates a layer mask so you can tweak this background removal if it didn't do it correctly. So it looks like it did a pretty good job, but I'm just going to try to tidy it up a bit more by using the polygonal lasso tool. So I go around selecting the parts I want to remove, then make sure the layer mask is selected, pick black as my colour, click the paintbrush tool and then paint black inside the selection. Keep doing this until you're happy with the selection and masking. I then also trace around the rocks below her feet and masked out her feet as well to make it look like she's behind the rocks. So now to make this even more realistic, let's add a shadow below her. To do this, I make a new layer at the top. Again, make sure it lasts the whole 10 seconds on the timeline. Then I grab the paintbrush tool, make sure the color is black, right click and pick a small size with hardness 0. And I just paint roughly around her feet. 
Then I go up to filter and then blur and then Gaussian blur and then I add a bit of Gaussian blur to fade out the edges a bit. You can then use the free transform tool and adjust the opacity to shape the shadow into place and make it look more real. Then I also added a layer mask to the shadow layer so the shadow only appears on the rock part and not anything above it. Next I duplicated this layer, made it even smaller and also played around with the opacity as shadows are usually more concentrated closer to the subject. Alright, so the last thing we're going to be doing is to color grade this composition and we're going to be using adjustment layers to do this. You can either adjust the tones and colors of a specific layer or you can adjust the entire composition. Let's start by adjusting the grade of the subject layer first. To do this, click on the subject layer and then go down to the bottom here, click this button and then pick one of the adjustments. I picked brightness contrast to begin with. Then to make it so that only this layer is affected, right click on the adjustment layer and click create clipping mask. Now any changes you do on the adjustment layer will only affect the layer right below it. I then kept on adding more adjustment layers like color balance, curves and hue saturation to try to color match the subject to the background better. I'm going to be making a YouTube tutorial in the future on color matching so we can dive a bit deeper into this in that video. So next let's adjust the color grading for the entire composition. To do this click on the top layer and then again pick an adjustment layer to tweak. For this you don't need to create a clipping mask and it's just going to adjust all the layers below it. Just keep playing around with it and keep adding adjustment layers until you're happy with the tones and colors. The benefit of using an adjustment layer is that if you make a mistake, you can just click it again and keep tweaking it until you're happy. And that's it, let's now export it out. So go up to file, export and then render video. I usually just leave the settings as default, pick the location you want to export to and then export out at H.264 format. So again, this technique on creating a cinemagraph can also be applied on any other video editing programs out there. And here's the final result. Alright, I hope you found that tutorial useful. And if you do use this tutorial to make your own cinemagraphs, make sure you tag me in your Instagram posts and stories because I would love to see them. But yeah, if you have any questions or any future tutorials that you want me to make, drop them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more coming soon, hit that subscribe button. As always, thanks so much for watching and remember to always push your creativity to the next level. Bye!